This Steve Jones Show podcast is now loading. The Steve Jones Show podcast is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Bringing you an in depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is The Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, NIL Game Changers, and Sunbury Motor Company. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. And this opening half hour brought to you by NIL Game Changers, the ultimate destination for name, image, and likeness opportunities for both athletes and businesses. Visit NILGameChangers.org to start your journey. We will start our journey on the show today talking about the Kentucky Derby. We're going to have to maybe wait about 10 minutes before we get to that because we're trying to work around Dick Girardi's schedule. And uh, when Dick is ready, he will let me know. He was going to let the suit know when he was ready, but the problem is there is a restraining order. So, what? What? Some, you got to lead the league in something. He leads the league in um, ROs. <laughs> you think after a couple, there'd be a little more uh, something, a little more powerful? No, it's almost like a rubber stamp now. As soon as it goes into the court, bag next, it kind of keeps everything moving. <laughs> yeah, got it. All I do is show him his picture. Done. <laughs> so Dick will let me know when he's ready, and then we'll get to the Kentucky Derby and. Talk about uh, Bob Baffert not being there. It, it's it's really ingenious on their part. They're keeping Baffert away because they don't want Baffert overshadowing the 150. And by doing so, it's a story that he's not there for the 150. <laughs> it's like, I mean, who are who are the geniuses that run these things? Wait, why do you listen to consultants? I have no idea. I have no idea. None. They have not wrapped themselves in glory lately. No. Come on. They just don't. Oh, come on. Oh, I always love when they, when they come in. They start telling you what, you know, they need to do. And you're like, on, just move out of the way. <laughs> just get out of the way. <laughs> come on. All right. So let's at least get to the transfer portal part, okay? This is, um, we talked about the 48-hour period uh, after the portal closes because, you know, paperwork, processing, things like that, whatever, okay? You just have to make sure you get your name in before the deadline. And... Yesterday, um, it was, uh, it came out that King Mac had put his name into the transfer portal. Uh, and that's the one above all where you sat back and went, oh, really? I, I was surprised by that. And that that surprised me. Other things didn't surprise me. I mean, in other words, am I surprised that that Malik McLean went in? No. I mean, it's not as if he doesn't have certain gifts. There's no doubt. He's got a lot of heart, desire, length, uh, speed. His problem has been simple, consistency. Hey, Steve. Uh, yeah. Dick's on the line. Oh, Dick is, ah, no, he ended up sooner than we thought. There we go. Uh, so, all right. First of all, great one, welcome. Thank you, Steve. Uh, let's uh, start with who's not there besides you and me, and that is, of course, Bob Baffert. I think it's an ingenious move to have 150 not have Baffert there because you don't want him to overshadow the event, 
And by not having him there, he overshadows the event. Yeah, it's really strange. Uh, for the people that don't know the history, let's we have to go back three years now, right? Yeah. Medina Spirit finishes first in the Derby. A week later, it turns out he's got this metamethasone, an anti-inflammatory system, can't race with it. So he eventually gets disqualified. Not a performance at answer. It's an anti-inflammatory, but he can't have it in the system, so he gets DQ. Fine, no problem. Churchill then says they're mad at Baffert because he's had a couple similar incidents in the recent years. So they say, they say you're barred from Churchill Downs tracks from racing any horses for two years. Well, that, that's never happened in the history of horse racing before, that, to my knowledge. Uh, they were upset. Look, they didn't like the fact that they had headlines, right? Uh, Derby winner, positive for drugs, uh, doesn't look good, disqualified. Uh, but the reality is... Nobody wants to hear the context. It was, again, not a performance answer. So we think this uh, ban is up after two years, right? The two-year ban sounds like it should be up. Well, on July 1st of last year, Churchill Downs announced, oh, by the way, we're extending the ban to at least the 2024 Derby. So Baffert has a horse called Booth who won the Arkansas Derby. He would be probably the third choice tomorrow. Yeah. He cannot run. We'll see him in Baltimore at the Preakness. So, yeah, unfortunate. I think just like vindictive, kind of silly, but that is where we are. The most prominent name in the sport can't run in the biggest racing sport. I don't get it. They're making him out to be Lance Armstrong, which he 100% is not. But right. That's Churchill Downs. Right. They can do whatever they want. That's what they're right. doing. Well, in fact, um, I believe that the amount that they found in the horse would have been the equivalent of a $500 fine. I believe. Yeah, back, right, yeah, back in the day, Steve, it, it, it wouldn't have been that big a deal. It was interesting. Um, typically, this betamethasone is something that's injected in, into a horse. To, it's, right. Again, it's an anti-inflammatory. Sure. But in this case, and I don't have any reason to doubt this, it was actually an ointment they gave the horse for a skin rash. Right. And it showed up in, it showed up in the test, so there wasn't even any attempt to give him this. Right. And it used to be, until a few years ago, you could actually race with this. Yeah. But they changed the rules, and I think rightly so, because the concern was the vets, they, when they're examining the horse, mm -hmm. maybe by having this anti-inflammatory, you're not seeing, it, it's masking that the horse potentially could have a problem. Right. So it wasn't about making the horse run faster, it was about, oh, God, could this horse be hurting and we don't notice it because he's on this drug the day before the race. Um, so it, I, I think it made sense to ban it on race day, but unfortunately, because it was in this ointment, it showed up in the post-race test. Did it make the horse run faster? Absolutely not. No chance. And anybody who knows anything about horse racing knows that's true. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, the rules were the rules, so he got disqualified. But the overreaction from Churchill was just completely, to me, just, just wrong. But look, it's their racetrack. They can do whatever they want. Sure. Right. <laughs> and they do. And they do. Uh, fierceness uh, with Todd Pletcher training uh, right now be about five to two. What's the like about this horse? The numbers. Uh, you know me. You've known me long enough. I'm a data guy. <laughs> I love numbers. Uh, fire speed figures. One ten of the Florida Derby. Higher mm -hmm. the better here. One oh five when he won the Breeders' Cup, which is an astonishing number for a yep. two-year-old November. There's nobody else in a race that's ever come close to those kind of numbers. So that that's the tip off that fierceness is by far the fastest horse, and that's the that's the right way to look at it. The problem is fierceness has had two races where he was just god awful. Uh, so the yeah. question is why were those? Why was he so bad? I think both of them had to do with gate issues. He just didn't come out of the gate. He, he was uncomfortable. I like the post position. I love Johnny V on this horse, John Velasquez. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think he's going to get a good spot, Steve, coming into the first turn. If you hear Larry Comas tomorrow saying, and Fierceness is up close or Fierceness is in front, yeah. I think you can just go to the windows. You're going to cast your bet if you bet on Fierceness. I don't think they're going to be able to beat him at that point. But the start is going to be everything, those first 400, 500 yards. And interesting, this is one of the fun stats. Todd Pletcher has started 64 horses in the Kentucky Derby, more than anybody ever. Uh, now, there's two years where he had five horses. There were yep. four years where he had four horses, four years where he had three horses. Yep. 
Well, this year he's only got one. What does that tell you? Uh, and, and in addition to that, <laughs> all those years, now Puncher's only won two, right, with all those 64 horses, yep. but he's only had one favorite. That was 2017 uh, with Always Dreaming. Well, Puncher's mm-hmm. one for one with favorites. I think he's about to be two for two. Yeah. Uh, and, and not only that, I think starting from 17, that outside area, I think that 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 actually is a benefit for him. It keeps him out of traffic. Hundred percent. I love the outside post for a speed horse because the, the the biggest issue with this race is twenty horses. Uh, yep. we, you know, we've talked about it regularly, but yep. all right, normal. The most you can have in a race is fourteen. All right, let's in the biggest race in the sport. Let's just have twenty. Uh, look, in fact, in the Super Bowl next year, Steve, why don't we have twelve on a side instead of eleven? It's That's a great dumb. idea, <laughs> but it, it's just. But it, it look. Let's explain exactly why this is. It's greed, pure and simple. <laughs> Churchill Downs knows the owners want to come. They yep. get six extra starting fees. They get six extra groups of people yeah. that are buying seats and and meals, and the hotels love it because each horse brings a few dozen people more yeah. to Louisville. So, yeah. And and look, my concern has always been because of this, there could potentially be an accident in that run through the first turn. And I always am scared once they sort themselves out of the backstretch, that's usually fine. Uh, but th- that's when it'll get reduced from 20 if there's ever an accident. I hope there isn't one. Uh, but yeah, I just think it's stupid that we have 20, but we got 20. And and look, half these horses have no chance at all. Zero. Of course. That's right. But, and, and their owners are just out there to have fun and enjoy it. And they got money. And, you know, when they run 18th, they'll go, yeah, we're probably not good enough. <laughs> hey, but you go back and go, hey, well, we had a horse in the Kentucky Derby. That's, that's exactly. exactly. That, and that's, that's really what, what it is. is. Yes. And I mean, this, this is Derby 150. And I was just saying to somebody, I mean, this race has been around since not long after the Civil War. I know. I mean, really? I mean, I that's a long time. That is so, and, and it's been run every year. It's the longest continuing continuous run sporting event in America. And this year, they've gone, and they have all this money, Churchill Downs Incorporated, which is, you know, it's a, it's a stock, it's publicly traded. They spent $200 million on the paddock to expand it. <laughs> NBC, I'm sure, will show it. $200 million on the paddock. I mean, that used to buy you a, an arena back in the day and the paddock they basically made it into a stadium inside the stadium and he'll love this where the horses the stalls of the horses there's 20 of them there's a there's a window at at the end of each stall and on the other side of the window are fans who are paying exorbitant amounts of money to be able to look through the window to see the horse and it's one of those one-way windows, you know, like where the criminals inside getting questioned. <laughs> one of those deals. Except there's no phone; you can't talk to the horse. Uh, Perfect. And, and I think I, I think that's like five thousand for the day, yeah. and, and they have standing room around the paddock. It looks glorious, uh, but that's the kind of money Churchill generates every year. It's two hundred million, and they said they'll pay for it in seven years. They're making like 25, 25, 30 million a year by the tickets that they're selling just around the paddock. That doesn't wow. count all the other suites and the mansion. The, the old press box is now the mansion. That's where Michael Jordan and Tom Brady and those guys hang out. Oh, you mean them? Them, yeah. That, that yeah. used to be me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no longer. We're gone. Yeah, our first year in that new press box was 2005. And I remember saying to a couple of my friends, and it was an unbelievable view. You were right on the finish line, right below the announcer's booth. I said, get a good look at this, boys. We ain't going to be here long. <laughs> uh, we, didn't, we didn't make it a decade. They said, you know, why are we giving this away to the press when we can sell it to Michael Jordan and Tom Brady and make a few million? And they're now making a few million in the new press box at Churchill Downs. You cannot see the racetrack at all. In fact, it's not even in Louisville. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> it's in Cincinnati, but it's in who's cap? <laughs> Chad Brown has won the Eclipse Award as a trainer four times. He has never saddled a Kentucky Derby winner. He's got Sierra Leone. All right, your thoughts on that horse? 
No, he, he's live. And, and Chad hasn't had a lot of chances at the Derby. I want to say maybe 10 to 12 starters. And he's, um, Steve, in the game, he's known as a legendary trainer of grass horses. Obviously, this race is not on the grass. That's right. But in his br- brief time at trying for the Derby, he's had a second and a third. Good Magic ran second in, in 2018. And in most years he wins, he just happened to run against Justify. He was you know, just right. one of the great horses of the 21st century. And he ran third two years ago with Zandon. And to that, I still try to even, not even think about it. Rich Strike, I, I had a gigantic attack of <laughs> epicenter over his hand on I, I on, remember. Here comes remember. the 21 running up the rail. <laughs> Who is that, and what is he doing? <laughs> he, texted, um, he texted me afterward. He goes, this thing goes flying by me, 21. I said, he texted me. Yeah, Who I is that? I didn't even know who it was. <laughs> I had more. Steve, I had a world record number of texts in the first 30 seconds after the Derby with the same three letters. It begins with a W and ends with an F. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, really? What, what, what is that? It was bizarre. But yeah, I, I, I was counting the money that day. And, 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 and so Chad, has, when he's had live horses, his horses have run really well. And he has said Sierra Leone is the best one he's brought. Uh, he's a nose for being undefeated. He won the best prep race uh, in in this this winter and spring. The Risen Star Stakes at, at uh, the fairgrounds in New Orleans. So he wins it. The horse that runs third, uh, Catching Freedom, came back to win the Louisiana Derby. Yeah. Uh, Sierra Leone himself came back to win the Bluegrass. Horse that finished fourth, Resilience, came back to win the Wood Memorial. So everything out of that is running. Um, so, yeah, it cost two point three million at the sale. Some of the richest people in the world own this horse, uh, and and they're they're not playing yeah. around. He's by Gunrunner, who was the horse of the year, just elected to the Hall of Fame. Uh, so yeah, he's he's legit. The issue is that he's he has no speed whatsoever. So he's going to be coming from way back in a twenty horse field. So he's going to have to pass. I don't know if he's going to have to pass nineteen, but he's going to have to pass right. a lot of them. Right. He's going to have to. He's going to have to count on horses really tiring to get it done. Uh, Correct, and, and and they will. I mean, he'll be the last one running. He'll right. be running the fastest at the end. It's just a question of how far back is he, and can he right. pass all the ones in front of him? Right. I mean, because it's a mile and a quarter. These horses have never run a mile and a quarter. Uh, nope. That is so, correct. All about family stables uh, went out to the uh, Keeneland sales, and they picked up along the way. Uh, the course you talked about, Catching Freedom, and that's Flavian yep. Pratt on board, and Brad Cox is yep. training it. Uh, thoughts on yep. what makes this horse a, a possibility? Yeah, he's the Louisiana Derby winner. He, he was third at Risen Star we talked about. He won the Smarty Jones Stakes down at Oakland. He, he's never run a bad race. He's got a similar running style to Sierra Leone, so they'd be happy to see fast fractions going up. I don't particularly see the race that way, but that's how they would hope. And he's got my favorite rider in the country riding him. Uh, Flavian yep. Pratt is is just at seeing races, Steve, and understanding where to be and when to move and all of that. He's the best, uh, and so that that gives the horse a real a real shot. But again, similar to Sierra Leone, he's going to have to have things really open yeah. up at the right time. Like you can't start making a move. These are not cars. You can't hit the brakes and then it's get instant acceleration. It doesn't right. work that way. So you need when they start to move, you need the move to be continuous. So that's the issue with that. But that's why that's why you employ guys like Flavian Pratt because he's that good. Which then brings us to the Japanese horses, and especially Forever Young coming into this. What's your thought on them coming in, and, and what are the wild cards with them? Right. So Tio Password, I, I don't have any particular feel for him. He's two for two, both races in Japan. It's just hard to get a sense. Of, you know, what is he running against? What, what does it all mean in two races? Right. I, I mean, there's inexperience, and then there's two races. That that seems a little crazy, but we'll see. Forever Young's legit. He's five for five. And not only did he win three races in Japan, he won in, in Saudi Arabia, won the uh, Saudi Derby, and beat a really good American horse, Bookham Dano, and that. So you get a sense of what his form is. And then he won the UAE Derby over in Dubai, and so he's, he's one on dirt. He's one on American kind of style racing against American style, uh, type of horses. So I think he is a contender. 
And look, the Japanese are, are starting to win big races all around the world, a couple, including a couple of Breeders' Cup races at Del Mar a few years ago. So they're going to win the Derby. They have an incredible program over there. They do it very differently than we do, but they're an international factor. And Forever Young is the, the horse at, up to this point with the best chance of any Japanese horse of winning the Derby. So if he wins it, I will not be shocked. I'm not picking him, but he's got a chance. So since you're not picking him, who are you picking? How do you want to play it? Yeah, I'm picking fierceness. I'm a, as I said, I'm a numbers guy. The numbers are all screaming. You know, he, he's like he's like the horse with the best Ken Palm uh, to get into basketball yeah. here, uh, yeah. and he's good on offense and defense. <laughs> he's got the whole package. And Again, the only the, issue, and yeah, the, coach the only on, issue and is the coach on board's he, pretty good. <laughs> right. It, it, if he doesn't break, it's a huge concern. But I'm assuming he is going to break. You can't assume the bad thing's going to happen. But if he does, he's just faster than anybody. Everybody. So then I'm looking for some exactas. I'm going to play the 17-2 with Sierra Leone. And you're saying, well, wait a second, those are the two favorites. But the cool thing about the Derby is, because it's 20 horses, you can catch that exactly. It might pay 50 for two because there's so right. many combinations. It, it, it's, not, it's not like it's going to pay $8. It's not going to happen. I also like Honor Marie, the seven for second, so a 17-7. Yeah, uh, maybe a little seventeen eleven with Forever Young. That'll be a number. I'll be looking at you know what are the prices, what's the best possibility. But I've kind of conceded the race to Fierceness, and Steve, he's either going to win or probably be nowhere. I don't think he's going to be second. Right. And, and if he runs, he's going to, he's going to win. I don't right. see him if he comes into the stretch and, and opens up on the turn by three or four laps. I, I don't. I'd be shocked if he gets beat. And the, the part about the two favorites is interesting. Most people would stay away from the combination of the two favorites. Correct. If you, if you had this in a normal race, Todd Pletcher, Dad Brown, with the two most accomplished sources, you'd be drooling at this exactness. But yeah. people will go, oh, no, i got to hit bigger one in the third. But you know what? If you hit it and it pays 50 and you have it for something, I don't know, with some zeros involved, yeah. eh, it's okay. Don't pay. It'll be a good thing. And that's why we have you on. People feel there they have go. a shot now at getting money. <laughs> that's the Thank object. You. you are the best. Well, I think Mm. When car repairs get difficult. Well, I, I just don't know. Um, me neither. We get good. Sunbury Motors. More than quality new and used cars, Sunbury Motors specializes in complicated auto repair diagnosis. They can handle intricate repairs and even complete auto body with service open Monday through Friday, 7 till 4. And Sunbury Motors has made simple repairs easy. Maintaining your vehicle is necessary. Finding the time to do it is difficult. Welcome to Sunbury Motors Quick Lane. Just walk in or call ahead. Relax in their remodeled waiting room with Wi-Fi, beverages, and snacks. Will Sunbury Motors factory train techs take care of your oil change tire alignments, brakes, and inspections. Quick Lane, 6.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, Saturday, 6.30 till 2. Sunbury Motors, Ford and Hyundai, North 4th Street, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. We take the Mm. out of auto repair. Party time, game time, or just fun time. Doesn't matter what time it is, because it's Brewers Outlet time. The Beverage Supermarket has the area's largest beer selection. Imports, microbrews, ciders, and domestics. Pick from over 100 ice-cold 12-packs and dozens of 24-ounce singles. Soda, snacks, hot sauces, fresh roasted peanuts. Make it one-stop party shopping, and don't forget the pickle bar. So whatever you're celebrating or just doing it up, Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street, Sunbury, wants to see you. And thank you for your years of patronage. Bringing you an in-depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Now, from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. <laughs> Great to be with you on the show today. So I, I, <laughs> I texted Dick. I said, well, I, no, that was outstanding as always. He texted me back, always a good time talking animals. <laughs> <laughs> Only he can do that. 
only he could. <laughs> Always good. Talking animals. Uh. <laughs> Uh, I'm still on the one-way glass to watch the horses. You know what? I want one to flip a hoove now. <laughs> uh, um, <sighs> it's interesting how they have these areas now set up in arenas, stadiums, or in this case, the Kentucky Derby. Whereas a donor, you can pay for that experience. And I don't get it. <laughs> now, part of it is, now, and, and let's be realistic here. Now, why would I say that? I mean, really, why would I say that? Because I have access to that stuff all the time and, and right in front of me, so, like, I don't... You know what I mean? So, so I'm not going to get it. <laughs> but, like, people like to be in that spot where they can go down, feel like they're... Hey, you know, I was right there, and I, you know, got to look in, and I saw fierceness. Wow. Okay. I got to see endlessly. I got to see West Saratoga. I got to see, in, well, you can't see Encino. Encino got scratched. Catching freedom. Okay. Great. Yeah. Meanwhile, the suit's putting all his money on the two Japanese horses, I guess. He was already down and complimented you two in the interview. <laughs> I said, this must be what it's like working with Shoei Otani as interpreter. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. God, I wish I'd said that. <laughs> you know, you you went with fierceness first, and I didn't realize you were talking about the der the looking into the derby. In my head, you were I was I was thinking you were talking about him looking at the football players coming out of the locker room. Right, to right. More horse well, racing no. names. Uh. <laughs> uh it's uh, it's interesting how he's looking at this, and you try to come up with combinations, but he's going with the two favorites. And look, in the 20-horse field, and that's why I made the point I made at the end, in a 20-horse field, everybody's going to attempt to be clever with it. You know what I mean? And sometimes... Well, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go with fierceness and uh, to password. The fifty-six to one, or you know, I think now the morning line is now thirty to one. It was fifty-six to one at one point. Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, the soup, by the way, put all his money on Encino and Magatu. Not good picks. Want to know why? We both scratched. <laughs> I can't believe you can't bet on that early in the week either. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. But as he points out, and he makes a... And he makes a really good point. Um, this has gone on now. This will be the 150th year. And if you go all the way back, that means that in 1874, nine years after Appomattox, nine years after Appomattox, they started running this race. Think about that. I mean, that's the depth of history of this thing. 
Now, have I ever been to Churchill Downs? Yes. Have I ever been to the Kentucky Derby? No. Have I ever been to Churchill Downs? Yes. Uh, Twin Spires, the whole thing. It's, yeah, it's cool. No getting around it. You're like, whoa. The other part, too, is I thought that was really great, is the soup bought a hat. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah. How about that? One of those big ones. <laughs> Could you picture that? Could you picture him? No. No. <laughs> and but... I, those hats, some of those hats, even, I'd be afraid he'd... Some wind would catch him and he'd fly away. That's what I'm always worried about when I see those. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's. They're big hats. Yeah, but let's take it. Look. <laughs> Do you think any gust of wind could pick him up? Uh, no. No. <laughs> I have the same problem. I'm rooted to the ground as well. Whew. Yeah. Uh, so. That is the uh, uh, I think this is going to be I think the Derby's always fun but you, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait and the whole deal's two minutes you wait all day and the lead up and I, I look and I give is it NBC that it does this? I yes. guess NBC does this. I think Fox now has the Belmont. Uh, so NBC does this. And I give them all the credit in the world for doing a series of shows leading up where they cover everything. There's no stone unturned. Okay. And they do all this... For two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. I would say the Derby and the Super Bowl are the two events that always, you know, that always I always think of waiting around all day for. Yeah. To start, and I think post time, I think the post time for this year's Derby is even pretty late. I think it's like six fifty seven. Is it that late? Yeah. Um, wow. Um, wow. Six fifty seven. Now remember too, because it's Louisville, um, and it, I know it's in the Eastern Time Zone, but because it's further west, sun goes goes down a little later there. So it's not, you know what I mean? It's not as I hear the sun goes down at what eight o'clock? Yeah, and they'll be. Right. Yeah, I mean, they'll be done by uh, yeah eight. I mean, I'll bet the sun goes down there like eight fifteen or something like that, eight seventeen or some some number like that. A post time six fifty seven. Ooh, that's a that's a long day. Um, it's like it's waiting for the, that Sixers tip last night. Oh, yeah, that was, and that game. Um, let's can we start out with Joel Embiid just very quickly. Um, the guy playing with. Bad knees. Bell's palsy. And and I give him credit for even being out there. And I know there'll be people critical of how he's played. And you know, look, it's it wasn't you know was that him at his best? No. Yeah, but he did have a fifty-point game. Um, but just to go out there, I give him a lot of credit. I thought it took a lot of guts. And Maxi played well in a couple of games. He didn't play well last night. You know, the fourth quarter he was okay. Tobias Harris did nothing. <laughs> Matt's wife posted pictures of what they were doing outside yesterday, and Luke shot baskets. And my joke on uh, Matt's Facebook post was, "He made more shots than Tobias did last night." <laughs> well, he made as many. I can tell you right now, the kid made none. 
Uh, so, <laughs> not at that basket. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> he contributed just as much as Tobias did last night. You know, but this is a strange league. It is a strange league, and it, in terms of the perception of it, they try to force stars down our throats. All right, to make you give you the impression they've got like this tremendous depth of stars. Um, so Tobias Harris, well, they get him. He's you know, he's a he's a star. Well, he's for the most part, he is a couple steps above just another guy. All right, a quarter of a billion dollars in salary in his career and no All Star appearances. All right, Patrick Beverly. Ugh. Who got into it with the media? Got into it with a fan. Um, the has always been like, oh, oh hey, got Patrick Beverly. That's a big, oh, that's a like. No, it's not, because he's just a step or two above just another guy. I mean, look at the guys in. Look, there's a certain standard I use. Now I realize I'm talking about team construction here. Team construction. But I look at the 86 Celtics, the Celtics of the 80s, the Lakers of the 80s, and the Bulls of the 90s. All right? Would James Harden start for any of those three teams? I would no. say yes, but he would. it wouldn't be no. that. That wouldn't be that. No. He would not start for any of those teams. You wouldn't start for any of them. Now, again, they're constructed as teams. So that is the caveat here. Okay? He would not. Would Russell Westbrook start for any of those teams? Nope. Paul George? Are you kidding? Paul George wouldn't start for any of those teams. Right? These are guys that are all labeled as superstars of today. They're, they're, Paul George is a superstar. And he's halfway between just another guy and a star. He had a couple of really good years in Indiana, but, you know, you put him in a prime spot in a playoff game, do you want him taking the shot? You put James Harden prime spot in a playoff game, do you want him taking the shot? Or would you rather have Dennis Johnson take the shot? Dennis Johnson's not the star of the Boston Celtics, but would you want him taking the shot? You're darn right I would. Game four, Los Angeles, overtime. Okay? Down two games to one. Who took the shot? Oh, Dennis Johnson did. Made it. I'd pick him to make that shot before I'd pick any of these guys to make the shot. And it's not there, as if there aren't great players today. There are great players. LeBron James is beyond words. I don't think we have to go go any further than that. Nikola Jokic, I think a guy like Jamal Murray is 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 a special player. I think that Luka Doncic is tremendous. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are, are great. Joel Embiid's a great player who could play in any era. Um, uh, you've got a lot of guys, you know, like that. I think Jalen Brunson you look at what he's done the last couple of years. He's an absolute star. You know, Anthony Davis, anybody would love to have Anthony Davis. That kind of length, athleticism, ball handling ability, things like that. But there are other people in this league that are portrayed as stars, like Trey Young's a star. Trey Young wouldn't play for the Celtics, the Lakers, the Bulls, the Pistons, the, the, early, the Lakers of the early 2000s. Okay? What, would he be playing on the Spurs? Or would you play Tony Parker? I guess, I guess my argument just against that is part of the way that these guys play is the way <clears throat> is the the style of play today, the AAU part, you know, coming up through AAU. I think these guys have different games if they're if they're coming up in the eighties with the other te- with these other teams is a. Uh, is an argument, I, I guess, is my argument against that. 
And a fair argument, and my argument is quite simple, right? How many rings does Trey Young have? How many does Tony Parker have? Well, I I would take Tony Parker uh, in a heartbeat over uh, Trey uh, Young. <laughs> right, right. How many does Mono Ginobili have? How many does uh, – I mean, you start going through the list of guys. Right, I mean, how many does Danny Ainge have, for goodness sakes? Now, is is Trey Young a better player than Danny Ainge as a one-on-one player? Yeah. But as a team player, a guy that you need to win championships, I can count on Danny Ainge. I can't count on this guy. I need to count on – when you're a star, that means that people are counting on you and you have a reputation that when you're counted upon, you come through. That's part of being a star. All right? And there's too many guys in this league that I could not count on in a key moment of a game. I could count on Jokic. I could count on Jamal Murray. I could count on um, – on Doncic, believe it or not, I'd look at Kyrie Irving right now and feel like I could count on him. I think he's really adapted his game well in Dallas. Giannis, absolutely. Middleton, I think Middleton's a terrific player. Right? Lillard has shown even when he didn't have a lot of talent around him that he, he could he could hit big shots, big moments. LeBron, obviously. Davis, obviously. I mean, guys like that. But D'Angelo Russell, please. No. When he played against Penn State at Ohio State, I was like, yeah, you can see he's really talented and good, but he didn't blow me away. Yeah, I didn't walk out of there going, oh, man, he's something else. No. Nope. nope. You want Kyrie as your point guard, not as your science teacher. <laughs> yeah, right. Look, and look, and I know that when he was with the Celtics, I mean, he was a, a locker room and practice cancer. I, I mean, yeah. I understand that. Uh, I'm saying now... Now, uh, I'll give him credit. It looks like he has adapted his game to fit what Doncic does in Dallas. And by the way, Kawhi Leonard, when he's healthy, I'd take him in a heartbeat. When he's healthy. I think the Clippers agreed with you about Paul George. I think that's exactly why they got Kawhi Leonard. Again, it's not Paul George has some talent, but he's halfway between just another guy and a star. Portraying him as a star is a disservice and really is insulting to fans. Come on out and see. I mean, who who's bought tickets over the years say, I can't wait to see Paul George come to town? Who? His parents. I can't come up with anybody else. <laughs> I was waiting for the last part. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. Come back. More in a moment. Great to have you with us today. Here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Spring has sprung, and it's time to dust off those insurance policies. For over 100 years, the Purdy Insurance Agency has been protecting families and businesses of the greater Susquehanna Valley and beyond. With the experience of our trained and knowledgeable staff, you can rest assured that your needs will be evaluated and met by some of the industry's best representatives. No matter what your insurance needs are, call Purdy Insurance today at 570-286-5855 or visit our website at purdyinsurance.com to see what we can do for you. You want a unique way to display your brand. You need a team of seasoned experts to work with. You want to reach customers who buy. You want NIL Game Changers, a versatile consulting agency powered by former student athletes and coaches who work as NIL sports agents. NIL Game Changers will help you build powerful relationships with customers through compelling stories with student athlete influencers as your leading edge. Finally, we'll equip you with the right media to drive your success home. NILGameChangers.org, building meaningful relationships with your customers. 